Caregiver Jobs in Canada with Free Visa Sponsorship Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Travel Abroad Migration. If you're a caring individual seeking exciting opportunities in Canada, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to explore an incredible pathway to Canada for caregivers, even if you don't have a university degree. Canada is actively searching for international caregivers just like you. I'm going to walk you through the details of how to apply for this exceptional program as an international care worker. We'll cover the eligibility criteria and various platforms where you can discover caregiving opportunities. This pathway doesn't just lead to permanent residency, it also offers a fulfilling career in the caregiving field. It's a chance for caregivers from all over the world to start a new chapter with their families in Canada. Whether you're an experienced caregiver seeking a fresh start or someone who has always dreamed of making a difference in others' lives, this video is your gateway to an inspiring caregiving journey in Canada. So, sit back, relax, and let's explore these opportunities together. But before we dive in, if you're seeing my face for the first time, I'm Eva, a content creator with a wide range of videos on immigration. Whether you're interested in visas, conferences, studying abroad, scholarships, or jobs abroad, anything related to immigration, you'll find it on my channel. Please consider subscribing for more informative videos. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so that you too can recommend it to others. And please share my videos with your friends and loved ones. Keep watching for valuable insights because today we're diving into an exciting opportunity for those interested in becoming permanent residents in Canada. In this video, we'll be taking a close look at a pathway that offers immense potential for individuals keen on Canada's immigration programs. Our primary focus here is to evaluate this application pathway against the specific selection criteria set by Canadian immigration authorities. I'll be providing you with all the details about this pathway, including its eligibility criteria and how you can position yourself to take advantage of the opportunities it offers. If you're considering using this pathway for your immigration journey, you're in the right place. To give you a rough idea of the opportunities available through this pathway in 2023, Canada's immigration plan includes accepting 2,750 applications in each of the two categories, totaling 5,500 applications. This highlights the substantial potential offered by this pathway, which you can tap into to fulfill your Canada immigration dreams. We're discussing two pathways, essentially two pilot programs being conducted by Canada's immigration authorities. Both of these pathways are related and revolve around healthcare providers. The first one is designed for those interested in home child care provider roles, while the second one is tailored for home support workers. In this video, we will delve into the eligibility criteria, including requirements related to education, official language proficiency, and the necessary work experience needed for you to successfully apply under these pathways. It's crucial to understand these criteria to navigate your path towards Canada's immigration opportunities effectively. Let's kick things off by discussing the educational requirements for this pathway. If you're considering applying for either the home child care provider or the home support worker roles, there's a specific educational criterion you must meet. You must possess either a Canadian post-secondary education credential or its foreign equivalent. In cases where you've completed your education outside of Canada, it's essential to go through a credential evaluation process with one of the educational credential assessment bodies in Canada. This assessment ensures that your foreign education is on par with Canadian standards and is a crucial step in pursuing these immigration pathways. For applicants with a foreign educational credential, the ECA report must indicate that the credential is equivalent to a completed Canadian one-year post-secondary or higher educational credential, be less than five years old on the date of application receipt, have been issued on or after the date the ECA organization was designated by IRCC. Equivalency assessments will include an assessment by the designated organization of the authenticity of the applicant's completed foreign educational credentials. If you hold a foreign credential, the educational credential assessment report you obtain must clearly indicate that your credential is equivalent to a completed Canadian one-year post-secondary or higher educational credential. Additionally, it's important to note that this assessment report must be less than five years old on the date your application is received. If you've previously obtained an educational credential assessment report, you can still use it as long as it meets the requirement of being less than five years old. This can be a valuable asset in your application process. Now, let's shift our focus to the language requirement for the home child care provider pilot and home support worker pilot programs. When it comes to Canada immigration, proficiency in either English or French is a crucial requirement. Language proficiency is a fundamental aspect of these pathways, and meeting the language requirements in either English or French is essential to qualify for these immigration opportunities. 
The applicant must demonstrate that they have attained a language proficiency of level 5 in the Canadian language benchmarks or the niveau de competence linguistique Canadians in either English or French for each of the four language skill areas reading, writing, speaking, listening. Along with their application, applicants must submit the results of an English or French language test from a designated testing organization to demonstrate that they meet the required language proficiencies. Results for all four skill areas must be demonstrated in one evaluation, as per Ministerial Instructions 32, subparagraph. Results from multiple tests will not be accepted. Language test results must be less than two years old at the time of receipt and will be used as conclusive evidence of an applicant's language proficiency. Other written evidence will not be considered. In addition to the criteria we discussed so far, there are requirements related to qualifying work experience and other additional criteria that are important for these immigration pathways. Now, there are two categories of applicants who can apply for this pathway. The first category comprises individuals who already possess Canadian work experience. In theory, this immigration pathway requires a minimum of 12 months of Canadian work experience. However, it's important to note that even if you don't have Canadian work experience, it doesn't automatically make you ineligible for this immigration pathway. There are options available for applicants without Canadian work experience as well. Certainly, they have created a solution for individuals who don't meet the 12-month Canadian work experience requirement. Let's focus on the specific category of applicants. Applicants without 12 months of experience, category A, gaining experience, Applicants who are otherwise eligible but who do not yet have the 12 months of qualifying Canadian work experience at the time of their application for permanent residence will receive an ORODP. I'll explain exactly what this ORODP means. It stands for Occupation Restricted Open Work Permit. Essentially, it's a type of work permit that allows an eligible person to work for any employer, but the specific job they work in must be specified. Since this pathway is related to people in child care or home support roles, if you obtain this type of work permit, it means you are only allowed to work as either a child caregiver or in the area of home support. For those who don't yet have Canadian work experience that they can use to apply directly for permanent residency under this immigration pathway, the solution is to secure a job offer and work as temporary workers with an occupation-restricted open work permit for a period of 12 months. After this 12-month period, they become eligible to apply for permanent residence. This work experience obtained during the 12 months will help meet the requirements for the pathway and pave the way for permanent residency. That's right. The key idea is that if you secure a job offer and within 36 months of the approval of your occupation-restricted open work permit, you can demonstrate that you've accumulated at least 12 months of authorized work experience in Canada. You can then use this work experience to apply for permanent residency. This is indeed exciting news because within the span of 36 months, which is equivalent to three years from obtaining the work permit, you would have had the opportunity to gather at least 12 months of work experience in either of the two designated areas. This work experience in Canada can be directly applied towards your permanent residency application. It provides a clear pathway to achieving permanent residency for those who initially lacked Canadian work experience. When it comes to securing a job offer for individuals who don't yet have Canadian work experience, it's essential to be aware of the National Occupational Classification NOC, codes required for each of the two pilot programs. For the Home Child Care Provider pilot, you'll need a job offer under the NOC code 4410. It's important to note that individuals who work as foster parents are not eligible to apply under the Home Child Care Provider pilot. For those looking to immigrate under the Home Support Worker Pilot, please be aware that the eligible NOC code for this category is 44101. Selecting the correct NOC code is crucial when obtaining a job offer for these pathways, so make sure you align your job offer with the appropriate NOC code based on the program you are interested in. Of course, let's go over the information again for better clarity. The employer cannot be a business but rather must be a private individual seeking to address their in-home care needs. The employer cannot be an embassy, high commission, or consulate in Canada. Although not a business, the employer is required to obtain a CR, a business number. The employer can include more than one individual, for example, Smith and Brown, but must constitute one single employer, that is, one single CR, a business number, for a position outside the province of Quebec. For full-time employment, full-time means at least 30 hours of paid work per week. Non-seasonal in a home child care provider or home support worker occupation. 
genuine and likely to be valid when the applicant is issued the initial OROTP. The job offer must also describe the work and duties to be performed by the applicant. These duties must align with the actions described in the lead statement for the eligible occupation, as set out in the occupational descriptions of the NOC. So, it's possible for two individuals to provide you with job offers, but both job offers must be associated with a single Canada Revenue Agency CRA, business number. This means that the job offers should originate from the same employer or entity. And the job offer must be for employment outside the province of Quebec. Job offers within the province of Quebec are not eligible under this specific immigration pathway. To be eligible, the job offer should be for full-time employment. Full-time typically means working at least 30 hours of paid work per week. And also please be aware that the job offer must be genuine and likely to be valid when the applicant is issued the initial work permit. Immigration authorities will assess the authenticity of the job offer based on specific criteria to ensure it meets the program requirements. It's important to meet all these criteria to have a valid and eligible job offer under this immigration pathway. Indeed, an exciting aspect of this pathway is that you can receive a job offer from a relative who resides in Canada. For instance, if you have an uncle or cousin in Canada who requires a child caregiver or a home support worker, they can extend a job offer to you, even though you are related. However, it's crucial to emphasize that the job offer must still meet all the conditions and requirements set by Canada's immigration authorities for this specific immigration pathway. So, having a relative provide you with a job offer does not disqualify you from being eligible to immigrate as a permanent resident in Canada. The key is ensuring that the job offer aligns with the criteria established for this particular immigration program. Canada's immigration authorities take several measures to assess the genuineness of a job offer. These measures help ensure that the job offer aligns with the reasonable needs of the employer and is in compliance with program requirements. Here are some of the ways they evaluate the authenticity of a job offer. Consistency with employer's needs. They check whether the job offer is consistent with the reasonable needs of the employer. In the case of a relative offering you a job, they would assess whether your cousin or uncle genuinely requires a child caregiver or home support worker. Wage alignment. They verify whether the salary offered in the job offer is in line with the prevailing wage in the province or territory where the work will be carried out. This ensures that you are being offered a fair and competitive wage. Feasibility of offer terms. Immigration authorities also examine whether the terms of the job offer are ones that the employer can reasonably fulfill. For instance, if the employer commits to paying you a specific amount per month, they'll check if the employer has the financial means to meet this payment obligation on a monthly basis. These checks help confirm the legitimacy of the job offer and ensure that it complies with the program's requirements, irrespective of whether the offer comes from a relative or a non-relative employer. They also check if the employer truly needs a caregiver. This can include proof like having a child who goes to school, expecting a new baby, or having someone with health issues at home. They make sure the employer can afford to pay the salary mentioned in the job offer. They look at all these things before saying the job offer is good. And even if the job offer comes from a family member, it's still okay. That's one of the good things about this immigration pathway. Now, I'll quickly show you where you can find jobs in these two categories in Canada. I've compiled a list of platforms where you can search for jobs as a child caregiver or a home support worker in Canada. Here are some platforms to consider. General job platforms. These platforms have job listings from various provinces in Canada. Canada Job Bank. A comprehensive platform for job opportunities in Canada. Workopolis, another great platform with job listings in these categories. Simply Hired, known for offering diverse job opportunities. Indeed Canada, a widely used platform for job searches. These platforms should provide you with a range of job listings in both categories. Now, if we're looking at provincial platforms that host jobs in specific provinces in Canada, here are some options. SAS Jobs, you can find jobs in Saskatchewan Air. Alberta Jobs, check out this platform for job listings in Alberta. BC Jobs, look for job opportunities in British Columbia. To give you an idea of the job opportunities in these two categories in Canada, let's take an example. If you're searching for a job as a personal support worker or in the home support field, on Canada Job Bank alum, there are currently more than 1,000 job openings in this area. This provides a significant number of opportunities, and you can filter these job opportunities according to each province in Canada. We've been discussing this immigration pathway that offers numerous benefits. In 2023 alone, there are 5,500 opportunities available for this immigration pathway. 
Whether you want to apply as a home child care provider or a home support worker, both of these pilot programs offer pathways for Canada immigration. It doesn't matter if you already have qualified Canadian work experience or not, there are options for both scenarios. We've included relevant links in the video description, so make sure to check out those links, especially the job platforms where you can find job listings in these two categories. You can apply for jobs that match your expertise. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.